If you are American and you hear the word Broadway, you probably think of this. But if you are a person who lives for trips to the Cotswolds in England, this is Broadway to you. In today's video, we will explore the famous village of Broadway in the Cotswolds, show you some footage from the iconic Broadway Tower, and as a special bonus, also take you to the nearby village of Buckland, which is a personal favorite of ours as well. But first, let's go to Broadway. I remember the first time I visited the Cotswolds with my husband nearly 30 years ago. And we came to Broadway and I decided it was my favorite Cotswold village because it does have this broad open area, this very wide high street. And that broad way is why it got its name. But it still has all the Cotswold charm of the honey-colored stone and the interesting architecture. And so it was my first favorite that I've since developed <laughs> several other favorites. Every year a new favorite actually. In this video, I will share with you three highlights of my time in Broadway and four travel tips for when you visit. Broadway claims to have the longest high street of any village in England. Here is a view of the high street sign on one end of the street near the war memorial and all the hotels and shops, kind of the village center. And this view from the upper end of the high street where the more quieter residential area is. More about that part of town in a minute. Broadway is the self-proclaimed historic gateway to the Cotswolds. This is funny to me because so many places claim to be the something of the Cotswolds. Last week's Painswick video, which was lovely by the way, so do catch up on that one if you've missed it, mentioned that Painswick is known as the Queen of the Cotswolds. And our home away from home, Cheltenham, is on the border of the Cotswolds AONB and calls itself the Center for the Cotswolds. It's always Cotswolds something or other around here. The first of my four travel tips I have for when you visit Broadway is the same one I give anyone visiting a popular Cotswold village. Try to arrive early in the day. While Broadway does have a relatively large car park just behind the high street, it fills up. You will have the least headaches if you arrive before 10 a.m. This post box on Broadway's High Street is obviously from the reign of Queen Victoria because of the VR inscription on it. But look at this next mailbox I found up the High Street. Okay, I think this post box is unusual because I don't see any marking on it for the king or queen reigning at the time of its installation. But I know I have postal workers who watch my channel on occasion. So if you are one of them, or if you are just someone who knows about things like this, tell me, is this unusual? And why is it this way? The lower part of the high street is where all the shops are, including this one I have referred to frequently in previous Cotswolds videos. These phone boxes bring back fond memories because I have a photo of Weston posing next to one of them probably 15 years ago. This home is right in the heart of Broadway. Beautiful magenta flowers, well manicured lawn, gorgeous home. Behind this gate, which gives it just a little distance from the hustle and bustle of the street, but right in the middle of all the action. Broadway doesn't have as many tourist attractions right here in the village as Borton on the Water does, but this is Broadway's museum and art gallery.
This video is a compilation of three different visits we made to Broadway this past summer. One of them was with our friends Luke and Kay from Flawless Food UK. They are food bloggers and new friends of ours, and we had fun showing them around the Cotswolds and eating yummy food with them. We will show you one of the meals we ate in Broadway in a minute, but now I'll share with you the first of the three big highlights from my Broadway visit. I saw several horses in Broadway. First these, and here are the next ones. Very exciting. You'll know from my Stanton video that people riding horses down the street in a Cotswold village is something that makes me very happy. Definitely a highlight of any village visit. Okay, this next story might sound dumb to y'all, but the incident made me giddy with glee. So I'm going to tell it anyway, and if you don't think it's interesting, then you just aren't any fun. This was the second of my three Broadway visit highlights. I was wandering through Broadway taking some photos of the horses, and I ran into this bloke who had the exact same fluorescent magenta rain jacket from Mountain Warehouse that I do. The only thing more awesome than seeing this was the fact that he was really cool and let me take a ridiculous selfie with him. What a good sport and a fun memory. Now it's time for lunch at the centrally located Broadway Deli. Let's go see what's inside. This is why Ian loves the Broadway Deli. It's because they have gorgeous produce. Here is my second Broadway travel tip for you. Take advantage of the opportunity to buy food at the deli rather than eating every meal at a pub or restaurant or tea shop. You can get fresh, healthy, and interesting foods that will cost less and be better for you. Except for maybe you do need a pastry every now and again, right? There are so many unique food items you can buy here in the deli. All kinds of sweets, packaged prepared foods, specialty foodie items, condiments, as well as freshly prepared entrees, salads, side dishes, and more typical deli items. And of course, a selection of Cotswold cheese. And finally, a mouthwatering selection of baked goods and pastries as well. Now let's see our lunch. We are here at the Broadway Deli, and these are our wee little glasses that we drink out of. I feel like I'm having a shot glass full of tap water. And this carafe that we were given to share the water, this is what a glass of water in Texas is about the size of this carafe. There was a sandwich of brie, bacon, onion marmalade, doesn't that sound good, and rocket. That's arugula for all you Americans and Italians watching this. This fascinating sarni is a vegan club with smoked tofu, sweet potato, tomato, piccalilli, avocado, and mayo. And last and best of all, the piece de resistance, this twice baked cheddar souffle served with a salad and fresh bread. Man, that food was delicious. And where we ate our yummy summer lunch was in this pretty garden setting with all the tables that are located behind the Broadway Deli. I would definitely recommend this place. Now for my third Broadway travel tip. This is a silly yet practical bit of advice about finding a public toilet. There is a public toilet in the car park, but it is crowded and requires money. But there is another public toilet that is just up the high street a bit, across from this nice home on the corner and down this little lane. It is a free toilet, but more importantly, it is less crowded and nicely maintained. Look, it even won a Lou of the Year award in 2020. And as an added bonus, it has a big fun playground next to it with an expansive outlook over the surrounding Cotswolds. I call this destination Lou's with views. My fourth and favorite travel tip about Broadway is to not miss the upper part of the high street. 
If you only see the touristy shops and stand in a queue at the ice cream shop downtown, you'll have missed a very beautiful and quiet part of this landmark village. The residential area at the top of the high street is not as packed with tourists, but it is loaded with gorgeous homes. And at the right time of year, yes, even some lovely magenta flowers. Every step, every breath But the neatest thing is this doorbell pull. travel highlight is a wee interview I had with a local craftsman who was assembling a stacked stone wall in front of one of these stately homes. Let's hear a few pointers on how these walls are made and take a peek inside a wall that's under construction. I, I've always been mystified by this because it looks like world's hardest puzzle. That you've got to like find the right size little bit yeah. of rock to fit in and then what is this you put little bits in the middle in between the two outside walls yeah so all the all the rubbish that you put with while you're chipping off all the little chips you put them in the middle and any any ugly stones as well so anything anything like this you put in the middle and it sort of holds the weight holds the wall together ah, and then the pretty stones that fit together nicely yeah. but then you have to whack at them to get them to be the right shape yeah either they either they fit or you sort of smash them with a hammer until they do i see so this is just like weightlifting all day for you <laughs> yeah you got quite be. the workout yeah so here we are in the upper reaches of broadway village along the high street and up here it's very peaceful and very pretty. On the outskirts of Broadway, just beyond some truly stunning and unique homes and cottages with the most interesting architecture is the historic St. Edburgh's Church. One of these homes near the church also was displaying a most attention-getting collection of hollyhocks growing right on the roadside. This is the oldest church in Broadway. Parts of it are from the 1200s, but most of the church is from the 1400s. And if you've watched any of my videos about churches, you know I'm a little obsessed with devil's doors, and I just loved this one up here next to these very old tombstones. 
is just a wee little devil's door. One of the things that's noteworthy about this church is it's called St. Edburah's. The story of the saint for which it's named is Edburah was the granddaughter of Alfred the Great. And according to the legend, as recorded in Wikipedia, she was offered that she could choose between jewels or having her own Bible. And she chose the Bible. So she became a saint and they named this church after her. The church is in a small crucifix shape footprint, but the bell tower is in the middle, which is unusual. We saw this in Fairford this week, but it's very unusual in general. Here are the choir seats. And the bell tower above. What I really love about the churches is this, that each church is unique. It has its unique features. And even though there's a lot of similarities, every time I walk into a church, there are things that surprise me. It's, a, it's discovering whatever little treasures are in each church. So even though Broadway is one of the biggest towns in the Cotswolds, this is not one of the biggest churches, and it's also not a lavish wool church like Chipping Camden. In fact, this font is very old and simple. Here's a monument with a skull on the bottom and some cherubs on the top. I have never seen such an old coffin, cart, beer in person before. Really? To be fair, I've only seen one other one in person before, but this one is so much more elaborate. According to this plaque here, it was given to the parishioners of Broadway, Easter of 1888. So, if you don't want to bother taking the gate or going through the gate, you can just use the steps. <laughs> it's a little easier. Gives you better exercise. Those steps also might have been there so that people could walk up them and get on their horses, especially ladies wearing their long dresses. But they're very old and very worn. Broadway Tower is an icon of the Cotswolds, perched on a hilltop outside the village of Broadway. It is set within a 200-acre parkland estate. The visionary behind the tower's creation was the famous landscape architect to the aristocracy, Capability Brown. The tower was completed in 1798 and demonstrates architect James Wyatt's combination of architectural styles, involving turrets, battlements, balconies, gargoyles, and grotesques. Another well-known name associated with the tower is artist William Morris, who used it as a country retreat. This Saxon tower was built to look like a castle, but it is actually a folly, constructed for Lord and Lady Coventry to observe views across the Cotswolds from this point, which is the second highest elevation in the Cotswolds. They got their wish. From atop this three-story tower, you can see across 16 counties on a clear day. We discovered the pretty little village of Buckland years ago and have been in love with it ever since. Buckland Manor is a stunning manor house with a church next door. The manor was built in the 13th century. We took our American friends here for afternoon tea in 2018 and another group in 2019, and it was a perfect meal in a perfect setting. Let me show you around. Buckland is one of our favorite places to have afternoon tea because the food is fantastic and the setting is gorgeous. You can dine in the dining room or in the library or out back here in their lovely gardens. The lavender is fantastic this time of year and full of bees, happy bees. And a lovely lily pond with some white
white water lilies, and pink. I love Buckland Manor. I also love the church next door. So let's go take a look at it. St. Michael's Parish Church in Buckland is a lovely old church which was mostly built in the 13th and 14th centuries. One claim to fame is that John Wesley preached here. Another noteworthy fact is that the east window contains some beautiful 15th century stained glass, which is believed to have been sourced from Hales Abbey when it was dissolved. For more on Hales Abbey, please see my Winchcombe Hales Abbey video, which I will link in the description below. The windows were so fine that when famous artist and designer William Morris visited this church in the 19th century, he offered to pay for the windows re -lidding. My favorite thing on the day I visited was the bench right here in the churchyard and the view of all the picturesque things you could see from it. I hope you enjoyed this tour of Broadway and Buckland. Don't miss upcoming videos of other wonderful places to visit nearby, such as the Lavender Fields and the sublime village of Snows Hill. Thanks so much for watching and do something good in the world today.